Lafayette, Louisiana. Last night on the road. We got about seven hours to drive tomorrow. It might be six. To get home, taking a week off. Actually, maybe a week and a half. My next shoot is midweek. Got a prep day and a production day. Multicam live switch to work out. Passed on some travel work. I could have gone back to California for a few days next week, which would have meant actually parking the van in Florida somewhere and flying to Southern California, working for a few days, flying back to Florida, then driving the van from Miami to home in San Antonio. I didn't want to do that. It's totally burnt. So I passed on that one and then immediately got an offer to fly to Washington, D.C. Same dates, different project passed on that one as well so yeah taking next week off gotta hang out at the house back to the gym look at this my truck's in the driveway i'm actually home for a change i have this box of new gear it's almost a thousand dollars u.s in items none of it is exciting but i need all of it for shoots coming up Six 50 foot XLR cables, P tap to Limo for the Pocket 6K to replace the one I broke. A box of crimp BNC connectors. I need to make some 100 foot cables. VCT plate for my second FX9, or rather the shoulder pad that goes on the VCT. A third time code locket box replacement love concealer for one of my sankins and uh, the vct touch and go plate that goes with the shoulder pad and an atem switcher hey what are you doing what are you doing cables yeah hi Set up three cameras in my living room. It's too hot in the garage. It's over a hundred all week. So the plan is two FX9s, which will have operators covering floating close-ups. And then the Amira will be a lock off wide. I'm gonna run the FX9s in Cine tone. And the Amira, I've got a LUT that's a little more vivid than RE Rec 709. It's got a little more chroma sat and uh the mid-tones are crushed a little bit and the blacks are down a little which is a closer match to the fx9s i've used it on a switch previously with success so that's my plan there i made three new bnc's i got a 100 footer a 75 footer and a 50 footer and then i've got some existing 50s as well as bnc barrels so feeling pretty good on the cable side i put sash cord tie lines on my new xlrs and here's my master spool of coax. If you don't know how to make BNCs, it's not that hard. You just have to have the right tools. If you're interested in a how-to video, let me know. Maybe I'll, I'll make a, a video. But the basic tools that you need are some kind of cutter. These are my wire strippers, but they've got a cutter blade at the bottom just to cut off your cable. And then you need one of these cutting tools, stripping tools. It's basically you've got two razor blades in there that you, with a, set screw you set the depth and then there's a little die that drops in there for the different cable gauges so i've got uh, rg59 in there now and if i flip it i can make rg58 and then two crimpers these are actually old school cable tv coax crimpers inexpensive ones but i use the end where they the jaws come together completely and i use that to crimp the bnc pin onto the copper which is these guys here. And then this is a set of ratcheting BNC crimpers I've had for a long time. The dies are interchangeable. So that's RG59 on the end or 58. I mix those up, whichever I'm making right now. So that just ratchets until it's fully crimped and your cable's complete. Now, the reason I'm making cables is I had some broken BNCs and this frustrates me to no end. I work in all these different cities with local crew. Might be my first time ever working with these people and then it could be years till I see them again. 
And consistently, I get people in new markets, they have like no respect for cable. They'll connect to a camera or a monitor or whatever the device is, and they just let the cable fall off the backside. And then as you're moving around through the day, it's yanking and stressing on the connector. And I had two BNCs get broken my week in Miami just from uh, you know careless cable strain. So I tell everyone, loop through the handle, tie off to the handle. And same thing on the other side. If it's a monitor or a cart, like tie it off, save the connectors. And then I got the switcher linked over ethernet so I can control it on my MacBook. I don't plan to do this at the shoot, but I wanted to get it working just in case they asked for some lower thirds or like a full screen graphic for the in and out. It's a one hour show. It's live to tape, but we're not streaming out live. So audio, the original plan was seven people at a table, each wearing a lavalier. I think I'm gonna end up doing three wireless, my two electros, one road, and then the rest will be hardwired just cause it's the only way I can do it with what I own. And then there's a stick mic that's gonna get passed around the audience. I'm gonna use my second road in a stick for the audience questions. It's a one hour show, so it'll be pretty quick. I just got an email and they're asking if they can add a eighth panelist. So an eighth lavalier mic, which I've got XLR, eight XLR inputs on the mixer, but that means the stick mic isn't, uh, I'm, I'm short a channel. And then I realized I can use inputs nine and 10. Where is it? You can go either uh, nine and 10 and they'll go either USB or over the aux inputs. Now I have this default configured that the aux connection is the headphone return from camera. But I just changed that in the menu, so now it's the, uh, a mic input, and I've got the road, one of the road goes going to aux. So that while that technically works, I don't have a fader for it. I gotta jump into the mixer here, menu, and then run the little multifunction dial that's hidden on the side here to change the level or the gain, yeah. So that's far from ideal in a live mix environment. So I don't think I wanna do that. So uh, I don't know what we're gonna do. We had talked about just having one table mic that gets passed between two of the speakers. This is my only tabletop stand. It's kind of tall and obnoxious. I could put a um, just a conventional stick mic on there instead of this condenser. And I've got a different mount that'll accommodate that. So yeah, maybe I'll do that. They've got a little bit of audio PA system equipment there. I may have to borrow. Time and weight saving experience advice for you. Anything that uses a traditional power cord, an IEC cable, this type of connector. Monitors, a lot of the newer lights run on these type of connectors. First thing I always do is I swap it out with a 25 or a 50 foot IEC cable. You can get them on Amazon or eBay. This is a 25, so each of my monitors in the case is a 25. And um, switcher, I mean, I have a few spares and this thing didn't come with a power cord. So I think I'm gonna run a 25 with it. But basically anything where you're typically plugging in an extension to get it powered, don't do that. Swap out your little six footer with a 25 or a 50. Truck is packed for the morning. I got a 6.30 a.m. call time, but it's here in town. I think I got about a 30 minute drive. So I'm gonna get up at 0500, get my ramp and the rock and roller. Might have to do two trips on the rock and roller to get everything in, plus the tool chest is going in. I've got three cameras on board, two FX9s, a Mira, three zooms, the usual package that rides on board. Here's my uh, new BNCs that I made to supplement existing cable. Just stripped my bunk from the Miami trip. It's been, let's see, five, six, seven, eight. Eight days I've had off in a row. It was fantastic. Went to the gym every day. I think I took one day off on the training. And we're supposed to wrap, I shouldn't say it right now, but uh, we're supposed to wrap at lunchtime. I think we're gonna be wheels up by 1300.
your career. Because the tech table is in the room, same as the event and presenters, we couldn't use comms, we interrupted the meeting. So I put the onboard monitor on each of the operated cameras with a program return. And then we just kind of worked out a plan, a strategy that obviously if you're up, don't reframe and get the other presenter. And then we're cross shooting close up. So each camera primarily favored opposing sides of the table. Lighting couldn't really do much in the room. I mean, it looked good, just overhead, typical office space. So I just had the two Geminis from opposing corners just to fill in eyes and faces. I had to go meet up with Henry. We've got several cameras in the room, and of course, everybody up here is on microphone, so that it's recording what we're saying. And we'll try, I'm going to. Uh, run out of here in the next couple of days, try to edit this and get this out on well part or on demand. For the All right, so show's up and running. These live switch, live event projects stress me out because I only do it a couple times a year where I'm responsible for putting all of the pieces together. So I got Ralph switching the show. Ralph switches the morning news locally here in San Antonio five days a week. So this was a like low stress uh, thing for him. Worked out it was his day off, so he was able to come out and work with us. It's one of Ralph's guys, Cam Op. Uh, oh my gosh, I apologize, I'm blanking on his name at the moment. And then we have Brent, another news guy here in town, former news. Brent saves the day for me every time I'm local. I try to get Brent on. He can do it all. Excellent producer, shooter, editor, Amira owner. And I ran audio, which was the thing that had the most moving parts and I was the most nervous about and since I had had the most communication with the client side. It's good you got the Transit Connect that has the high roof before they change it. The older model that has the taller roof. Oh yeah. Like mine was shorter. It only went up to the like the opening of the door. Oh really? Yeah. Can I take a peek? Yeah. Nice sandbags. Looks good. Next video coming up. Be a little bit of BTS on a conventional television projects.